This Destructoid PAX coverage is brought to you by Magic the Gathering, Duels of the Planeswalkers 2012. Hey guys, Tara here. It's the last day of PAX. I'm joined by Max Scoville and Phil Fish, who's the lead guy over at Polytron. How you doing today? I'm so tired. <laughs> It's the last day of PAX, and we're just like all cracked out on lack of sleep. How, Dude, how are you I've guys? had two five-hour energy shots today, and my brain is not in my head anymore. It's just I'm out there. Fortunately, this you've made a very weird game. Yes, I have. So it's really fun to play it in this in this mind. state. <laughs> yes. Explain how this works for people who are unfamiliar. All with right. Fez. Basically, Fez is about this little 2D guy living in a 2D world, and then he realizes that the world is actually 3D, and he sets out to explore it. Uh, you explore these uh, intricate 3D structures from four distinct point of views that are 2D, and you get to rotate the perspective in 90 degree increments, and that's the whole game. So, Polytron is just, or well, I guess Fez is just you and one other guy, yes, pretty it's much, me right? Yes, and Renaud Bedal, the programmer. Uh, I do all the art, level design, game design, graphic design, design, uh -huh. and he does the code. How many decades has this game been in development for? Six. Six decades. Six decades. Good 60 years. Yeah. God, this better be good. Yeah. It better be good. Oh, it's it's going to like match everybody's expectations. Have you guys run into a lot of challenges with the development, aside from the obvious lack of manpower? Yeah, we, we've lost our funding twice. Uh, uh, and you know, and when, when that happens, you go into like a three month panic mode where you don't actually work on the game. You mm -hmm. just look for money and you're just completely, yeah, you're just completely freaked out. Mm -hmm. That's not a problem that you can like push aside, like, oh no, I'll work on the game. Right, right. Because you yeah. need to eat food and pay rent. So, how do you design this? How does that work? Like, this is a pretty <laughs> hard thing to wrap your head around. Yes. I mean, do you have like blocks? Okay. Do you have blocks and shit? Do you use Legos? Do you draw stuff? Is no. it all in your head? It's kind of all in my head. Um, I realized a couple of years ago that I, I, I wasn't dreaming. I never remembered my dreams. And now I have a theory that in my sleep, I just iterate on level design. Oh, man. Because I'll be sitting there not doing anything, and boop, this idea, like this fully formed idea, like a, a, not just an idea, but like a level design, a specific structure will just pop into my head, and I'll put it in the editor, and it works right away. I'm like, how is this even possible? That's because level awesome. design for this game is complicated. Yeah. Usually it's trial and error, but every now and then these things would just materialize. So I think that all I do in my sleep is just work. It is literally a game made of dreams. I had a dream I, I pitched a game to Cliff Blazinski called Dick Guns. That's what I do in my sleep. I don't know. That's going to be a hit. So <laughs> what, are, what are some of your influences? Like, what are your favorite games of all time? Um, okay, so the, basically the, the trifecta of influences for this game are actually quadrifecta. Sure, for, yes. Uh, basically, uh, the first, uh, the, uh, sorry, it's Mario and Zelda. It's kind of a hybrid. It's like a, a, a platformy Zelda in that uh, the world is completely open and non linear. Uh, it's kind of a Metroidvania in, in a lot of respects. Uh, there's a lot of eco in there, uh, in that I was inspired by uh, Fumito Ueda's uh, design by subtraction philosophy. Uh, we had a lot of stuff in the game at some point, a lot of, uh, of game mechanics that didn't necessarily have a lot to do with the rotation. And we just started cutting at one point. We started removing, removing, removing until the only thing we had left were uh, ideas that were really, uh, really well integrated with the core mechanic. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a big inspiration. And also just the, the kind of the mood and the feel that you get in that game. I wanted to, to, to have that kind of uh, lonely nostalgia a little bit. Um, Very much got that, that sense of kind of isolation. Yeah, uh, I mean, you, you start in this village and you have you have your fellow villagers in there, and then when you when you leave the village and you enter the open world, there is nobody there. It's just completely abandoned, and you're the only one there. And uh, most of the time, there's no music. It's just the wind yeah. and uh, and things like that. So it's the game is pretty much completely exploration based, right? Because yeah. there are no enemies in it. No, there's no combat. There's no uh, conflict, uh, death. Uh, pressure, uh, lives, energy. Death N fell off of well, yeah, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> when you die, it just it just respawns you yeah, where exactly. you were. Like there's no boss fights or anything like that. Name a thing. We don't have it. Name a thing. Yeah, name a thing. Uh, a, a cats? Uh, no, we have cats. Oh, okay. I'll uh, take them out. I don't know. <laughs> do you pick anything up besides little? Yellow yeah, yeah. There's. I mean, there's crate puzzle. It's a video okay. game. Uh, uh, but I tried to make them interesting. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> um, fuck. Yeah. That was your first reaction. I liked it when yeah. you started the game. You said fuck no, we're like just six times there, in a like, row. This is 
it is like five o'clock on the last day of PAX, and we, you know, we're in a hotel room, we, we're meeting up, and we're just, we're all just like so brain dead. We turn this on, and it's just like rainbows and shit coming at your face, yeah. and like polygons mm -hmm. blowing up everywhere. And I just went, yeah, <laughs> it's it's really cool. Um, yeah. So, was this game at last year's PAX also? It was at PAX East. Okay. Uh, and that was the first time we showed it in about four years. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time we showed it was at IGF 2008. Uh, and then we, we realized that the game was going to take a while to make. So we kind of went low profile because we, mm -hmm. we couldn't realistically sustain a hype campaign for X number of years. So right. we just kind of disappeared. A lot of people assumed that the game was dead. Mm -hmm. uh, and then at PAX East, we, we resurfaced with you know a lot of footage and trailers and things like that. Mm -hmm. And the first public demo in four years. Uh, now we're back. Have you guys gotten a lot of good response from your booth at PAX? Because oh. you're kind of like in the middle, uh, like right by the escalator. So everybody has to you walk had by to walk your booth by it, yeah. in order to get to the show floor. It's been overwhelmingly positive. Like um, it's it's, it's kind of hard working on something like that for so long uh, on your own, you know, in your, in your little world. Um, I like the game, but I couldn't really trust myself to say like, oh, this game is good, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and finally having kind of a confirmation, like, you know, hundreds of people uh, one after the other telling you that it's great that it works it really lifts your spirits and it gives you that little boost of energy that you need to to, to you know ship it that's yeah. huge and shipments actually in sight at this point this yeah is, yeah you actually do you have a launch date or just like a uh, it, it's gonna come out in the win uh, uh, window yeah it's gonna come out in the window <laughs> Window. Yeah, you know the window that's window. gonna be released in. Yeah, that's when it. That. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it should come out by the end of the year. Uh, winter. Very cool. That's what um, do you have a, a price point? Uh, we don't know. Uh, yeah. Fun fact: Microsoft designs that. Hmm. Really? Right. Yeah. <sighs> um, so it's XBLA. That's XBLA. Happening. Yep, that's um, that's a fact. And it's coming out soon. Is that exciting? Like it's it's the end is in sight. It, it doesn't. I don't think it. it I I realize yet because uh, we hit content complete. That's a uh, Microsoft milestone. Basically, the whole game's done. Like the, every level, item, thing, playable from start to finish. We hit that the day before we're flying out here, mm -hmm. and then it was packed. So, you, you know, were telling me how big is the game? It's pretty damn big. Uh, uh, there's there's 150 places. I, I don't like to call them levels because sometimes it's just like the inside of a house, and then sometimes it's like a big sprawling level. They both count as levels, but there's a, there's 150 spots, um, and the world is divided in these these five main zones uh, that you can play in any order. It's kind of structured like the first Zelda in that there's no critical path. So you guys have been working on XBLA version forever. Um, once it comes out, I'm sure it's going to do really well. Do you guys ever have plans of maybe porting it to PC or another platform? We're really not even thinking about that right now. Uh, all the work uh, involved in, in making a, a game for Xbox, uh, the you know achievements and uh, leaderboards and all sorts of technical requirements, adds a lot of work. Or like the trial experience. The trial experience is months of work to get it right. It's not just, oh, you take a little part of the game and you call it the demo. Right, yeah. Uh, so since there's only the two of us, we're concentrating on, on this one version that we're gonna get right and and to me I wanted it to be a console game mm -hmm. you know, look at it like it's a console game I wanted it to be played with a controller and a couch and you know so much of the game is about like getting sucked into that world and the ambience and to me that was like a kind of you know relax in your couch and just spend some time in that world yeah your game it's it's a uh, it's wonderfully non-threatening like it's yeah it's that's, very that's definitely was something I was going for and it's so simple too like you just you shift the uh, the dimension with yeah. the triggers and you jump with the, the buttons. I, I really don't play as, as much video games as I used to because so many of them are all about putting you in these incredibly stressful situations. Like it's always a threat, it's always conflict, it's always like twitch, like quick reflexes. And you know, at the end of the day, I, I sit down, I don't want to be put in that kind of, of, of stress. You know, yeah. I want to relax, I want to unwind. Uh, so I wanted to make a game like that, that, that people who are sick of that, that that kind of, uh, I mean, I like fucking violent game, you know, I like shooting guys in the face as much as the next guy, but I, I like other things. Yeah, also. sometimes you want to just chill the fuck out yeah. and not, not feel stressed out, because, mm -hmm. um, what are some visual influences for you? Because you, you designed this from the ground up. Yeah, uh, I, from the beginning, I knew I wanted to get that that blue sky aesthetic. You know, that was really important to me. Uh, so when we, when we started uh, designing the art, I sat down one weekend and I watched basically every Miyazaki movie. Oh wow! Because that guy knows his skies. Yeah, that is. It's, that's, uh, I'm, I'm looking at it right over yeah. there. Like he's zoning out. And it's, it's really pretty. Um, the windmills and butterflies and stuff. <laughs> thanks. But uh, thanks. Yeah, our, like that's so Miyazaki, obviously. Yeah, Miyazaki and, and uh, you know like uh, Wind Waker also was an influence. And, and yeah. I, I wanted really bold colors and you know the the, the, the blue sky, the blue water, the green grass, uh, things like that. Um, and uh, the, the the pixel art aesthetic wasn't just like a, a nostalgic grab. It was, it was very much based on the the core idea of 
this pixel, this square is actually a cube. Cubes. And then that also influenced the, the style of the pixel art in that everything in that world is square. Like the trees are square, the houses are square, the heads are square. Uh, there's no organic shapes. There's no like aliasing. Uh, like, there's a square, 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 square. Very square, cool. Square, 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 square. Well, yeah. Fez is Fez. a very weird, cool game. And uh, that comes out soon. Soonish. Phil, you've been fantastic. Thank you your very much. Is, your game is an uh, incredibly good game to play when you're this tired, and I'm I'm so happy this is what we're seeing. It's really cool. I'm so, so happy you're so tired. It's, I mean, it's it's just like I could go home and play this, and I'd be okay with that. You know, you could. If this was like angry shooting noise machine game, I would I would be upset. That's a good name. Anyway, Pax has been awesome. It's been yeah. it's been great talking with you. And, Absolutely. Um, guys, pay attention to this game. Duels 2012 has intuitive controls and lots of helpful tips, so whether you're a seasoned veteran or you've never played Magic the Gathering before, this is a great way to get into it. The latest version of Duels has enhanced co-op modes and a new deck building system, as well as new decks, new characters, new puzzle challenges, as well as a new game mode called Arch Enemy. Duels of the Planeswalkers 2012 is available now on XBLA, PSN, and Steam. It's only 10 bucks, and if you're hesitant, there's a free trial. So go check it out right now.